Yeah. yeah. It is playoffs Tuesday, October baseball, and we are the beer baseball broadcast. Oh, this beer could not come soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> my God, it's only Tuesday. Oh, wow. my goodness. Best wow. night of the week, brother. Best night of the week. Best night of the week, and uh, we have a safe space where we can uh, lose ourselves for a little bit, have some beers, talk some baseball, and have some fun. Ah, exhale. Ah. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 76. Can you believe it? For October 12th, 2021, wherever you are watching us live today, Please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Some housekeeping before we start. Let's shout out our Patreon supporters. Thank you to Cowboy Jack Durango on the power hitter level. Thank you, sir. Also, thank you to Rachel Elnar on the power hitter level. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you to Scott Lost. He's on the cleanup hitter level. You can check out his comics and merchandise at accidentalaliens.com. Thank you to If Sports Cards. Hopefully Ian is out there uh, for being on the leadoff hitter level. You can check out their YouTube channel of sports cards breaks, pack openings, and mail days at If Sports Cards. You too can be a supporter of the efforts here at the Beer Baseball blog. Go to patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. And we have a Etsy store where you can support us by buying stickers, buttons, and beer coasters. Uh, we also uh, may have t-shirts and hats coming, but you didn't, a little birdie told me that, but uh, I will keep that for further episodes, so stay tuned. Here's a lineup card for today. Leading off, he's the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the Beer Baseball Blog, Cowboy Jack Durango. How you doing, man? How you doing out there? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here. I'm with my two brothers. We're talking baseball. It's October. I got to see the Brewers and the uh, the Braves, Braves. earlier. Yes. Today. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going on. The, 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 the Braves pitcher has definitely cut somebody with a shiv before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 I love that. that. I, go ahead. I, if I told that up, hey, yeah. what you doing out there? Yeah, I, I like that. Um, by the way, next time you do that, just go line. <laughs> yeah, be great. Well, no, it came to me. It came to me. It okay, did. all right, gotcha. Next, he's the field correspondent and senior research analyst here at the Beer Baseball Blog, Kevin Lyon. Hey! Two weeks straight on time. Love it. Hey, I made it. <laughs> you know, no know. I jumped in the shower, came on, like, all right, I got two minutes to get ready. Boom, here, ready to go. Love it. Love it. Thank you, guys. I'm Michael Mondragon, as I stated before, and I really appreciate all of you being here tonight. I'll go to the chat in just a second, but um, what I'd like to know is uh, something. I, I just I just want to get straight to it. What are we drinking tonight, guys? Oh, Let, let's just get wow, straight okay, to, right it. to it. Right to it. Right to it. No no mincing words, because, uh, yeah, I say it's been a long week. A uh, long weekend as well. Yes, Cowboy, what do you got out there? Well, he's ready. I am drinking... A Surly Brewing Company Axeman IPA. I'm drinking a few of these tonight, courtesy <laughs> of uh, wonderful good brother Ryan Farnan out in the chat. We've got a 7.2 ABV. It's an India Pale Ale, dank, hoppy, and loud. Brewed in Minneapolis and Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Yeah. And I was right looking, there. and uh, I don't, I didn't see any of these for sale anymore. So this might be an exclusive uh, beer that you may be drinking out there. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't see it available anymore. So I should maybe save one of them, or no. check check the date on the bottom of the can. It might be, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> can six date. six thirty twenty one. Hmm. Yeah. Uh. Oh, uh, I only turned 145 that way. How old am I again? How was 154 <laughs> birthday? No, out, out in the chat, Ryan Farnan had these delivered to my doorstep last Wednesday. So classy oh, move. Yeah. And uh, I have to say, damn fine beer. Yeah. Damn fine. 
I was curious when I saw the name Axeman, are we talking a guy with an axe? Are we talking the guitar Axeman? Because I was going to ask Jack, who, what, what kind of, what, like, who's your Axeman if you have a guitar guy? Uh, my guitar guy would be, uh, oh, man, I, uh, shoot, Vaughn. What's that fella's name? Uh, Ricky Vaughn. Ricky yes. Vaughn. Ricky Vaughn or BB Stevie, King? Stevie Ray Vaughn. Stevie That's right. Ray Vaughn. That's right. Ricky Vaughn. And BB King, those are my guys. There you go. Michael, just for you, I'll say Blackjack McDowell. Oh, that's that's nicely done. I'll throw, I'll throw you a baseball player who was in music. Yeah, that. Yeah. That yes. Um, well, and, and uh, guess who mine was? You will never guess who mine is. Your favorite guitar player? Yes. Um, Tiny Tim. I, no, I'm gonna, that's a good guess. <laughs> that's a great I'm gonna guess. Get actually. This. I'm gonna close. get this. Uh, Toby Keith. No, Jesus. <laughs> I thought it was closer. Wow. Me or Jack on that one. <laughs> to to use a phrase, you're not in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> is that a baseball term? It is. It is. Wow. Yes. Yes. Very Nicely good. done. Uh, all right. So so my my guy would probably be Bernard Edwards of Chic. Wow, yeah, that's that's a deep cut, a bass wow. player. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't have uh, never heard uh, that. Freak man. out. Do, 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 oh yeah. Do, 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 do. Huh. Freak out. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. So, and, and I also thought when I first saw this, uh, I also thought because I'm an axe man. Oh dun, no. Dun. You didn't go there. You didn't go there. <laughs> I, like to I did. Swing them. <laughs> I like to sharpen them. No, and that's like a, that's a cool can, man. It lets yeah, it's super cool. Know, oh yeah, lets everybody know how tough I am. I yeah, dare. skulls and axes and whatnot. There you go. All right, Kevin, you're up next. Um, oh, by the way, uh, the ABV is seven point two, and um, that has Citra yeah. and Mosaic hops. So and I think Jack's already done up his first can. Yeah, he is. He's 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 four. He's seven point two in. Yeah. <laughs> if you're yeah, scoring at home, may I ask what were you pre gaming on earlier? If you follow uh, confirmed outlaw on Twitter, you would see that he already was pre gaming. I was pre gaming on a on a little craft beer called it's called a dirty blonde. It's a dirty blonde ale. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Is it, is they, it Barrio they Brothers. It, no, it's uh, Twin Peaks. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's where the, the girls dress in very yeah, revealing yes. outfits. Yes. And, yeah. It's not it has nothing to do with the 1989, 90 through 92 television show. Right. Not at all. I just, okay. I was driving home. It was on the way. I don't frequent it very often. You know, yeah, I'm, mean? I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you don't. That's okay. Nice. So, Kevin, there you have an old favorite of yours. Um, if, if this, if Cheers had a beer, um, obviously Norm would have it. So, of course, this is a new well, one by Radiant. No, you know, I, I, I mean, yeah, October is a crazy month for me because I work for stuff Halloween related. And I'm like, how am I going to get a beer? I'm like, you know what? I can walk to Radiant. Why not get their new one? And this is called Turn Some Pages. Pretty straightforward IPA. It's light in color, full in flavor, modern IPA. I'm going to read the description here. Pineapple heavy aromatics. There you go. With cantaloupe, ripe peach, um, Gewurz, Traminer grape, whatever that guy of grape Boy, is. I never even heard of that. And a subtle dankness. Dank, dank, I don't know why it says dank is. I think it would yes. be dankness. It's but dank is. Prepare your palate for flavors of melon, green papaya, calamansi lime, and tropical fruit with very low bitterness and a dry finish. This comes in at, oh, it says 0% ABV. So I know that's not right. Yeah, 6.8. Uh, 6.8 IPA. Yep. Cheers, gentlemen. Yeah, that looks awesome. Uh, as a Citra Southern Passion Cashmere and Idaho Seven Hops. There you go. So this is this is very interesting because so it's a four hop beer, um, so it probably has like some complexity to it. And th the reason I say that is because my beer tonight is actually the Sim Coast to Coast. Yes. Uh, it is from Beechwood Brewing. It is a IPA, uh, seven point one ABV, seventy IBU. 100% Simcoe hops. Oh, yeah. So if I like the, the one thing, yeah, totally. I, I, I like that too. Pun. It's a really I saw, good. I saw that can. I should have known that that was the pun. Very good. Yeah. So the, the, the thing about it is that it only has one hop in it. And you can tell that 
it's actually kind of not not criticized, but people would think that it, because it only has one hops, it doesn't have that much complexity. I think that's wow. why we like exactly. I think that's why we like a lot of the other ones where they experiment with the different hops and mixing of the hops. So, yeah, this is this, but this one's good. I mean, Beechwood is like just a go-to. Uh, it's it's the, definitely we talk, one of the favorites of the show. You've had yeah. you've had them yes a few times. I've had them a few times on the show. Jack, if you're ever out back here in, uh, next time you're out here, they're based out of Long Beach, you know, not that far from uh, Top Gun Tall Wars neighborhood. So, yep. oh, no, ne out. next time I'm out there, I'm we're going to do a, we're going to do a three way dance at Radiant. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that. Yes, sir. What's that? What you got that Bob Seeger turn the page IPA? How is that? Hey, turn, turn some pages. I, I was like, <laughs> all right. I'm enjoying this. It's a nice, Good basic IPA. I get definitely no complaints for here. Cheers, Love gentlemen. It. Cheers, yeah. everybody out there. Thanks for coming out tonight. Well, everyone's so watching, hopefully watching that Brewers game. I can only follow along from uh, notifications from MLB. Yeah, and there was a really crappy call in it tonight, and I it's uh, it does it actually feeds into what we're going to be talking about tonight, uh, well, which, which is twice uh, in the playoffs already, twice it's, already in, the, in, this, in this series that definitely some, some questionable uh, things here. Any uh, cowboy jack needs to become an umpire. <laughs> well, I wouldn't cheat like you do. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's go to the chat and see who's out there. Uh, Bubble Pug, yeah, cheering for her uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Thank you yeah. so much, David. Uh, and um, yeah, we really appreciate you coming every week. Uh, if sports cars, Ian, yes, you are out there. Go Giants. Um, who else is out there? Oh, Ryan is here. Yes. There you yeah, go. and unfortunately, and and, and and Dodgers Giants fans, let's hope they fight it out. Yeah, you know, but, you know, and, uh, Brewers breaking yeah, my heart, but I, is, oh, are they no. still? I saw it's a hater over. on the mound. It's she over. It's over in the chat. She said it's over. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm like, what? I saw her right. Brewers lost. I'm heartbroken. I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah. And for the, well, and, I mean, and at least Tolkien's happy. Yeah, for, and the Braves are so overachieving right now. But you they know really what? Are. I mean. That could be a very dangerous team, a team who's peaking in October like this. You know, yep. You get hot the right time. That's what we feared. The the Dodgers were fearing the Cardinals. Cardinals got hot, and it just didn't work out for them last week. Yeah. And and what, what you find out later is that, you know, I found out later that all the Cardinals were hurt. Yeah, that yeah. took a lot out of them. So, um, yeah, we really appreciate everybody in the chat. Uh, oh, there are Caitlin's here. Thank you. Right on. Go Dodgers. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So sorry. Sorry, Bullfog. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's the thing about baseball as uh, baseball breaks your heart. And uh, you you you're not a baseball fan until you have your heart broken. And uh, we're actually going to talk about a heartbreaking thing of Kevin Lyon tonight. Uh, oh, he has no. a, he has a heartbreaking thing. So let's oh, get to no. it. <laughs> Let, let's get to <laughs> it. This is this day in baseball There's only history. One thing that could possibly be it. I'm just like, it was today. <laughs> it was today. And you have me on the show. And you don't warn me ahead of time. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're gonna walk you through it. We're gonna walk you through it because we're we're all friends. This is, we're, this is a safe space, as I said before. All right, so let's start out with October 12th, 1907 at Detroit Bennett Park. Right-hander Mordecai Three Finger Brown throws a two to nothing shutout, beating the Tigers to capture the world championship for the Cubs. The Cubs. Uh, although game one ended in a three three tie, uh, a twelve inning tie at that. Chicago becomes the first club to sweep a fall classic when a team wins the next four games. Man. So there you go. So, so Jack, I'm going to teach you a little bit about Hall of Famer Mordecai Three Finger Brown. Do you want to know, you want to know more about him? I can't wait. I can't wait. It looks like uh, <laughs> <laughs> looks like brother was a hard man. Yes, oh, he, yeah. he he definitely lived a very hard life. Well, so it's a minor. Oh. So Brown's life changed uh, as a five-year-old. He had his right index finger caught in a machine designed to separate grain from stalks and husk. The digit was sliced off, le leaving only a stump. If that wasn't enough, the next year, Brown damaged his hand again in a fall, breaking the remaining fingers. The bones healed, but the fingers were permanently at odd angles. Um, he said later that he always felt if he had a normal hand, he would have been a greater pitcher. 
Um, still a Hall of Famer. His final totals were 239 wins, 130 losses with a 2.06 oh. ERA with 55 shutouts. Yeah, all day long. Not a bad move, man. Not a, not a, yeah. not a bad not a bad move getting his hand caught in a slasher and everything. <laughs> It's that, I mean, that at, at, at five. Oh my God. I can't imagine that's, hey, that's awful. you know what though, but it's his fault. You know, I, mean, <laughs> you, 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 I don't know if you've seen these machines, but it's just, it's basically like a bucket with knives spinning as fast as you can see. Yeah. Especially in the kit. 800s. Yeah. yeah, that was a dumb kid. I would know. <laughs> yeah, luckily, you know, luckily you, I have all ten. Yeah, somehow. you built so those machines. You that's mutilated an, yeah. many year olds in the 1800s. <laughs> that is some tough love right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, October twelfth, nineteen twenty, at Cleveland uh, League's Park, the Indians hurdler Stan Kovaleski blanks the Robins three to nothing to win the 1920 World Series. The tribe en route to the franchise first world championship wins the best of nine series, five games to two. Uh, if you know anything about the Cleveland Indians uh, nowadays, uh, you know they they actually uh, they did well uh, during this time. And this 1920 was like uh, was a time when they were actually winning championships. But they've they've lost two game sevens um, as early. They lost to the Cubs. Uh, and a game seven and the Marlins in 97. Wow. So some hard luck there. I think the yeah, last I mean, one I, they won was like 40, right? Something like, yeah, something like yeah. that. And then they, you know, and then they just got stuck behind the Yankees for like the next, you know, after 1920, you know, the twenties was all about the Yankees and for like a long, long, long time. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, that they, what was it in the forties? They won a world series. Is that what I want to say? I want to say like 40 or 48. I, I, I that, yeah, that seems to stick in my head. Because, you know, Jack, you should know this. You love Major League. Yes. They talk about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the first time, you know, they made, you know, they made the playoffs in decades in the, in the, right. the, the, the movie. So, yeah, they, they, they actually got good in the 90s for a few years there. They did. They were. Yeah, they were very good. And uh, there was even some times when they were playing like the Yankees and uh, they got they got job. I remember they got job. No, no, it was the Orioles. Uh, saying the Orioles got job, but um, but yeah, they 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 were actually really World's good. Lost two World Series, but the Indians won two World Series. Is that right? In the nineties, I think they lost to the Marlins and they lost to the Braves. I want to say. Uh, that's yeah. right. That's right. They did lose yeah. to the Braves. Oh gosh, that, I totally forgot about that. That's the only, that. that's the only uh, World Series the Braves won in the nineties when they were like an inc- on an incredible run. But that's right. And I remember you know, uh, like the Dodgers. See how good the Dodgers are, but they still only won it all once in the last 25, 30 years. Right. So. And I remember their manager was Mike Hargrove, which was, uh, he was also uh, an Indians yes. player. Yes, sir. And uh, his his nickname was the Human Rain Delay. Yes. Well, there he goes. interesting fact, I mean, this day in baseball history, Kevin Lyon gave him that nickname. <laughs> yeah. So Probably. thank you, Kevin. Oh. Cheers, brother. Nicely done. Right. You're Nicely done. You're welcome. Everybody's welcome. All right, so th- this is this one's a little bit um, long, but it's like stick with me because I think that you'll enjoy this one. So on October twelfth, nineteen sixty seven, Boston's impossible dream comes to an end when the Cardinals Lou Brock becomes the third player in Major League history to accomplish three stolen bases in a World Series game. The three stolen bases during uh, that victory. Uh, gives uh, the speedy St. Louis left fielder a total of seven for the series, establishing a new World Series record. Also in that game, uh, ace Bob Gibson throws a three-hitter, his third complete game in the series, uh, to win it. So the impossible dream part of it, can you can you guess why they call it the impossible dream? Uh, I mean, if, Any... I, if Cardinals, probably Cardinals suck. Bad the year before. <laughs> well, uh, actually, it was Boston and the impossible. There, they were the the impossible uh, uh, dream, and it was actually a song from the uh, Man of La Mancha. <laughs> to dream the impossible huh. dream. So oh, I guess that yeah, was super, of course, yeah, so super no. popular <laughs> during the time. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah. no Boston. Boston was actually in ninth place uh, the year before, 
and they won the uh, AL pennant uh, on the last day of uh, of that year. So, uh, they, but they and they came one game short of being the world champions as well. So, so there you go. Because so, they were cursed. Because they were cursed. Right? That's right. Red Sox were cursed. So, um, so that was '67. Yes. Sir. So what were uh, so I want you to remember the next series which yes. is the 68 World Series, which we'll talk about right after this story. So October 12th, uh, another, um, uh, actually, uh, we, we actually, we'll, we'll talk about it later, but, but th remember, oh, okay. the, like, Wait, remember, remember the world, remember the World Series of 68, because we're going to refer yeah. back to it. Gotcha. But the, uh, but this is October 12th, 1969. Al Weiss's timely ninth inning hit combined with a two hitter tossed by Jerry Kuzman and Ron Taylor enable the Miracle Mets to even the World Series with the Orioles at one game apiece. Then uh, New York will win the next three games, all played at Shea Stadium to finish oh. their amazing season with a world championship. So, um, yeah, this was a big deal at the time that the, 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 miracle. the Orioles were miracle. super stacked. Is a miracle, sir. It was a it's miracle. Amazing. They're miracle Mets. Yeah, they weren't even supposed to be in it. The Cubs were supposed to be in it. And as we and I will make a reference back, Jack. Why? Why did? Um, remember the '69? Something happened in '69 that spooked another team and allowed the Mets to uh, get into it. They got spooked in Oct in October. Last week's show. Do you remember? Last, I, I do. I remember last week's show. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Well, uh, let me give it. Pete Rose came out onto the field in his underwear with a snub nose revolver, threatening to shoot someone. Well, then you watched. You were on a different show after you were yeah, done. You were definitely on a different show. If well, you remember, on, if you remember correctly, the black cat came out and jinxed him. Oh yes! Oh yes! Yep. Okay. They jinxed That's the right. Cubs, and the yeah, the Mets wound up getting. Games and he brought that up. Yep, the Mets wound up uh, getting in there, and then winding uh, up winning the '69 World Series. Because again, so, the Cubs are cursed. I, I, I curse the goat. I, I, I want to give kudos to whoever curates the pictures for the beer baseball blog, because <laughs> if you look at this picture, this guy right dead center is really excited to just smack brother on the butt <laughs> like he's so excited look at his hand he's going it is yep yeah. that's, yeah, that's how i good. feel that's how i feel when i see you guys i just want to smack your butts <laughs> hey, hey you know what michael you know what i like too you know what they're not doing hmm. going back to last week not they're high -fiving. not high-fiving by the way which was referenced today in, I believe it was the uh, White Sox. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was. It was. Uh, it, or was, was it the Brewers game? It might have been the, even the Brewers game. But I. But I. I seem to think they had that same picture of them high fiving. They were talking right. about it. Yeah, because so, they look. They're ready to speak hands. There's no high fives there. Look at you, you baseball That's journalist. That's right. Cutting just, edge. Cutting I'm edge. Just, cutting I'm just looking at this. I'm going. That they're not reaching high. They're, they're not. They're not. Are, shake of the hand, mm. pat in the yep. butt, and you keep going. <laughs> Everything's below the waist down there. Oh yeah. October 12th, 1972, in Game 5 of the AL Championship Series, the A's clinched their first American League pennant since 1931, beating the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium 2-1. Now, this is awesome, because I had no knowledge of this. All right. After the game, Blue Moon Odom and Vita Blue gave new meaning to the term swinging A's, when the starting pitcher and the game's closer begin to brawl in the clubhouse. Wow. Um, okay. So, so Blue Moon Odom started the game, goes for the first five innings, giving up one run on two hits, and then the starter is replaced by Vita Blue, who shuts down their opponents for a four-inning save. So that's so that's so seventies right there. A four inning. That's save. interesting though because Vita Blue is like an all star starter at that point. Okay, and that's how so, important it was, I guess, to get him in that game. Yeah. So good call. So despite the fact that both pitchers pitched well and their team was going to the World Series, uh, the fight broke out. So um, after going twenty four and eight with a one point eight two ERA uh, and winning the Cy Young Award in seventy one, Vita Blue had a disappointing seventy two. 
in which he went six and ten. So as a result, manager Dick Williams decided to use Blue as a reliever in the postseason. Oh. Vita Blue was very unhappy with this decision. And um, so so during when they were being uh, when uh, Blue Moon Odom was being interviewed um, and, and they were talking in the back, he said that that uh, that that he uh, or uh, yeah, Odom said that he choked. Um, oh. or sorry, Blue said that he choked. That oh. he couldn't he couldn't finish what he started. So he had to come in and then he started fighting. Oh, <laughs> oh Vida said the blue choked. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah. And then they wound up winning what three straight A four innings save. Come on. I know. Save. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Pretty most crazy. Bad, I had no most most close down you only get to get four hitters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Four outs, right. I should say. Yeah, you get four exactly. outs. Exactly. For a save. October 12th, 1982, in Game 1, Brewers leadoff hitter Paul Molitor becomes the first player to collect five hits in a World Series game. The third baseman's 5-for-6 performance helps Milwaukee route the Cardinals 10 to nothing, the largest shutout margin since the Yankees blanked the Pirates 12 to nothing in 1960. Now, this is a uh, series I believe the Brewers should have won. If not for a rainout, there was a rainout uh, right before I think uh, before game, either game six or, uh, or in between game six and game seven, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, the Cardinals went up winning this. So, but and it's actually the first. So when when we they talk about how many championships the Cardinals have. So as someone who follows the Cardinals, I don't count any of the ones that I wasn't alive for. This was the first one I was alive for, so that's what I count. There you go. So Jack, I'm going to ask you a question here. Uh, yeah, manager Harvey Keen. Yes. Um, he actually had, uh, there was actually a nickname for the Brewers in 1982. Can you name it? Or uh, And I'll, I'll defer to Kevin if he knows it after this. But um, any, any guesses to what the team was called? And by the his... way, drink, yes. Brewer, please. Yes. Yeah, no, drink for the Brewers. Salud. Yeah. So, you know, this was not my favorite Brewer team because they beat the Angels to get into the World <clears> Series that year. Yep. My first or another bitter disappointment apparently coming in the next slide or two. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the the 82 Brewers had a nickname. Yes, yes. and it was drinking related. Uh, man, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have to call them the the Chuggers. <laughs> Chuggers is chugging. right. I like that. I like that. That's that's very comparable to Harvey's wall bangers. Oh, go. I, you know what? Wall I do remember bangers. that. I dig it. Bubble oh, pug. look at that. Bubble pug got it. Bubble pug got that. Very Bubble good. Bubble pug. Yes, nicely done. Unfortunately, your your slide's blank, so I, I'm I'm a little disappointed. Is it really? That. Yeah, it's blank. Oh, there uh, it is. There it oh, is. That's so weird. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful. I can see. I, I, I can see. I didn't. It. I didn't even remember that. I was thinking like, well, not brew crew. That sounds too simple. But there you go. Yeah. Harvey's wall. Harvey's bangers. Harvey's wall banger. They, they had some solid. good. Comedy. That's a they solid some... name, man. So, uh, real it. quick, Robin Yount, Gorman Thomas, Ben yeah. Ogilvy, uh, who else? Ted Probably Simmons. Cecil Cooper's in there. Cecil Cooper. Uh, who was? Uh, and uh, Maltor's that... probably on there. Well, Maltor, yeah, that was. He had five for. He went five for six. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so there, there you go, Harvey's wall bangers. So yeah, I think Gorman Thomas actually, I don't know, it was either him or Ogilvy were like, I think see, this is where my break. This is why I went to so many games as a kid. I want to say Ben Ogilvy like won the home run title that year. Oh yeah, you're, you're, you, I think you're absolutely right on that. And because uh, that, that's that was my my first start going to games, you know, for the Angels in this lifetime. Yes. Not we're not talking about the 1900s. I know? want. I wonder. There was actually another player named Don Money. I think that he was also yes. on there. Uh, oh my God! Like oh, I, I'm gonna go. Not good to make it. Come on. You don't think so? I I thought. No, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, that might have been earlier too. So I don't know. It's too, very nerdy. He's a major leaguer though. Major yes, league name. cowboy. Hand up. So I I think that this this information has caused me to become a Brewers fan. <laughs> All right. Good. There and, you go. I, like the good. forces of. Brewers have been working towards me. I mean, since yes. the beginning of this show, Brewers, we drink, right? Yes, yes. Sir. My good friend Bubble Pug in the chat, she's a big Brewers fan, and now we have Harvey Wallbangers. 
maybe I should just throw my hat in with the Brewers, you know? Yeah. And you know what? You got Bob Euchre as your cop as your cop. Bob Euchre, yes. Ah, you yeah. know what? I, hey, Bob Euchre, I'm in. Yeah, hey. and you would love you would love the food too, the uh, cheese curds and and uh, all the brats and the the uh, the pretzels. I mean, the food was amazing. So yeah, I I, I think I think you've made a wide cho- wise choice. I, I'm on I'm on team Brewers team now. Team. I'm on okay. Team. So we we have two. I'm I'm glad I'm glad John is here because. Uh, so we we have two PT PST, uh, two PTSD moments, and oh, uh, the next one is Kevin Lyons, I'm, I'm October twelfth, nineteen eighty six. The Angels ahead five to four and one strike away from going to the World Series, see their leads vanish when Dave Henderson Hendu, who had Bobby Grich's fly ball bounce off over the fence off the heel of his glove. That was earlier in the game. People yeah. forget about that. Like he, there was he a quite had, few things. Being the the you know the hardcore. I'm sorry, I said eleven, a hundred and eleven. You know, okay, fame. <laughs> yes. How old I was back then? You know, there's yep. a lot of exer- ex, You know, there's a lot of circumstances there. And yep. just just that the Hindu just got that pitch and just. A lot of screaming in my house at that moment. <laughs> yes. So he uh, so he hits a two run homer off Donnie Moore. Uh, putting the Red Sox ahead six to five, California will tie the Anaheim Stadium contest in the bottom of the frame, but Boston will will prevail, scoring the deciding run in the eleventh inning on a Henderson sack fly. Yeah. People think that this was where they won it. They actually got mm-hmm. back into it. Yeah, or they went they went ahead, right? They went it, ahead and then yeah, yeah. But this it, was this wasn't the winning run. And no, when I then, look back at it. Um, they were, they had like people on the field, like there was oh, yeah. security on the well, look, field. You, like you look, you see all the, 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 do you see the people in the orange right there? Yeah. Those are all the ushers getting ready to like <clears throat> protect, try to keep, you know, protect everybody when they restore the field because they've never made the world series at this point, obviously. Yeah. 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 I'm just watching at home on ABC and just, yeah, you can look at Bob Boone right there, the catcher. Just, yeah. It says it all says it all yeah. for sure. All right, so October 12th, 2003, with his team having lost three consecutive playoff games on the brink of elimination in the National League Championship Series, Marlins starter Josh Beckett sends the series back to Chicago, striking out 11 Chicago batters en route to tossing a two-hit, four-to-nothing shutout at Pro Player Stadium. Florida will complete their stunning comeback by winning the final two games at Wrigley Field, including the infamous Game 6 that will make Steve Bartman an instant villain in the Windy City. Now, uh, Josh Beckett was, like, tremendous during the season and even Incredible. better in the in the World Series against the Yankees. Yes, sir. So, yeah, now, so that was... But something else happened in this game that's very interesting. So this may not seem like a big deal upon, upon first glance, but on, on October 7th, 1968, going back to the 68 World Series, 35 years after creating controversy with his non-traditional rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, Jose Feliciano, a blind 22-year-old Puerto Rican, sings the song uh, again before the cubs Marlins game. So the wow. game that we just talked about, Wow. Uh, cool. He actually came cool. back. Now, now this is this is a little bit uh a little bit confusing, but but stick with me. Yeah. So for those not familiar, in October 1968, it was the height of protests against the Vietnam War, and people traditionally did not personalize the singing of the national anthem. Mm-hmm. So Jose Feliciano came out and sang this by by today's standards it would be like we would be like oh that was really awesome and if you listen to it it's amazing it's so good it's 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 not too much it's not too little it's like perfect but at the time it was vilified and i remember even my mother talking about it like she would not listen to jose feliciano or like had like bad stuff to say about him because it was seen as disrespectful for anybody to do the uh, national or the star spangled banner any other way but straight, right? And so um, before the uh, start of game five in the 68 World Series, 
it created such a flap that his uh his songs were not played on the radio anymore it kind of like almost like a dixie chicks type of thing like people would not like you know they they came out against you know bush in the war and then they wouldn't play the records but this was a way bigger deal now this was like a 20 year old from puerto rico uh and and he actually at the time he uh like his popular song was like a doors cover of light my fire so okay but i know him more for every christmas he played a certain song do you know the song did do either of you know the song uh no i would i would guess feliz navidad but that might be it is it is feliz navidad of course feliz navidad and i would hear that and it uh, that actually came out in like uh december of 1970. so i've heard it like my whole life yeah i guess like i did yeah and i'm like i've heard that song by well, obviously, my whole life before you were born. I mean, come on. I mean, I was around for all this because six. Because you gotta realize too, tensions were very high at this point. Because it's October '68. You're about to have a uh, presidential election. Also, besides the Vietnam War stuff going on, there was all kinds of crazy stuff. At the at the Democratic National Convention. There was like like riots and protests going on there too. Yeah. So, yeah, there was a lot of tension going on because we we're like five years into Vietnam at this point and just yeah. Huh. It, was, it, yeah. was, it was super, it was super amazing. And okay, yeah. so so Kevin, I'm going to ask you this question. Yes, Who sang the national anthem or Star Spangled Banner in game two of the 1968 World Series? Do you have any idea? Aretha Franklin, I don't know. Okay, that's a great, that's a great no guess. Idea. I, it's not. It's just a guess. So, Marvin Gaye, wow, yes, sang Whoa. it. So, and he is wow. well known for singing the 1983 Star Spangled Banner at the NBA All Star Game. And if you look at that up on YouTube, it is. I mean, it, it, it if if Jose Feliciano got heat for doing his version. I'm almost positive <laughs> Marvin Gaye might have not even been able to leave the leave the stadium with that with the version that he did in the '83. Now, now do we know? He, I'm assuming. I mean, he, he looks a little more conservatively dressed in '68 here. I'm assuming he did a straightforward rendition in '68. So he was asked, and I and oh, yeah. gosh, I want to. I'm forgetting the name. It was. I think it was. I want to say Marty Brenneman, but I, I hope I'm, I'm I'm right on that because I watched a little documentary that was on Major League Baseball Network, and they they actually asked him and there was another there was a girl in game one they said please just sing it straight but then when jose feliciano came out he just did it the way he wanted to and the way he felt it and uh yeah he he got total heat for it but they asked marvin gay to just sing it straight yeah and so but you know later when he did it hit this version that it was influenced by that that day in 68. I'm not i'm not the i'm not the look these both up i'm assuming they're both on youtube am i correct they are they are okay, cool right on so um and luckily for us no but i was i mean all i think about is roseanne barr that was like right you go to that later and it's like she's making a complete joke of it you know yes so jose feliciano I, and there was another one where he was uh did it for the giants here he is doing it for the yankees so he still yeah. does a star, uh, oh, right star right. spangled banner before games and so now you can say that you know uh it just like paul harvey and that's the rest of the story right yes sir Awesome. So now, what was so what was so controversial about his take on the Star Spangled Banner? So usually it was sung. It 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 was seen as disrespectful to sing it any way, but then the intended purpose of the song to go to make it personalized. And I remember there's there's been other people that have been booed for their versions of it, their their, their creative versions of it, but it was unheard of at that time to do the the Star Spangled Banner the way that he did it. And if you listen to it, it's probably the best version of, of I've ever heard. It's so and good. I'm curious too, I don't, cause I don't recall if Jimi Hendrix got heat for playing the way he did on an electric guitar, but I guess maybe that's good, still considered Oh, straight. I'm sure he did. Yeah. You know, but I'm sure he got some flack for it for sure. I'm and sure I also cool. think too, there's, there's, and I, and I, and I hate to bring this up, but, but it's, it's, it's a big elephant in the room. The fact that he's Puerto Rican 
you know the fact that Jimi hendrix you know was black i think that that also led to a lot of like oh. like how dare you so yeah so yeah. i think that that had a problem possibly and, had more to do oh, with for it sure well. because you know i mean i don't remember when puerto rico became a u.s territory but i don't i don't I think it was like that long before before that time period. I want to say right. it's the 50s, but don't quote me on that. Right, right, right. I'd have to hashtag do the research. I might there do that right now. There you go. There you go. The next slide. So John Tallwar, if you're out there, I'm he gonna, is. I'm gonna I'm gonna give He's you a little there. bit of give a little bit of PTSD. Uh, but it's not it's not from this. You already it's, gave me it's mine. From, it's, it's, yes, but it's gonna be from what happens afterwards. October 12th, 2012, twice when it, within a strike of reaching the National League Championship Series, the Nationals suffered the worst collapse ever in a winner-take-all baseball postseason game when they are stunned by the visiting Cardinals. Uh, uh, they actually lose the game 9-5. Uh, to five. So after taking um, the team, six to, they were up 6 to nothing in the third inning, and then they clang to a, a two-run lead with two outs in the ninth. Washington's closer, Drew Storen, gives up four runs in the final frame, resulting in the eventual devastating 9-5 to loss at Nationals Park. This is Pete Cosma uh, for those, uh, the hero for the Cardinals that day. But John Talwar will not uh, like Pete Cosma because a week earlier he was involved in this he was uh this was exactly a week earlier this is the wild card game between the braves and the cardinals it is the infamous infield fly rule game where the infield fly rule was actually ruled in the outfield he had the ball he was tracking the ball at shortstop and he just let it drop because now that we had this discussion earlier today uh, in another uh, chat, because they had six umpires during the postseason, the left field umpire called infield fly rule and ruled it out. And uh, therefore, uh, the uh, by rule, they the runners can advance and it was just it was chaos and uh nobody knew what was going on well uh, an event a riot almost started nice. because of this <laughs> and uh john is uh, john is <laughs> yes he's in okay. the chat yes i yeah I, I, i've never well, seen, i've never seen this one your team just won a series today relax <laughs> hey man hey man don't take that away from him that's his feelings <laughs> no but you know what his feelings got validated all right yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. And 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 so yeah, this was I I so this was in 2012, and I was like, oh my goodness. So th there was a lot more that went on with this game, but that 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 in itself was a horrible call. They didn't have replay at the time. Uh, I'm not sure if it would have mattered because I guess the ultimate rule is that the, the left field umpire mm -hmm. called infield fly. <laughs> so there you go. It was done. And How did they not have replay at the time? Oh, a replay was is just a recent thing, actually. It's really? not even yeah, yeah. It took a long time to finally get replay. Ba baseball is still an old sport, and that you know, it it takes a while to evolve for baseball to evolve. Honestly, yeah. I mean, and then they have it, and it's still yeah. not good because and I was going to make this point uh, also that even into to get today's Braves Brewers game, there was a play that the player did not catch the ball. It was an obvious non catch and they ruled it an out and they did not go to replay. And it was, um, was it because they couldn't, I mean, is there certain play? by rule? You, yes, you, you can't, right. it, is, it is not a reviewable play. And so like, even though there's replay, it's, 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 it's so convoluted. Uh, and it's, 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 I mean, it's I get you wouldn't want to call like a ball or strike, but I think anything else would be like fair game. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't like the fact that they changed the rules for postseason, like even having six umpires, the fact yeah. that they don't have a runner on second during the postseason. Like why is the season different well, than postseason? Well, that rule I get why, but they don't have the changing the rules changes also the, the dynamic of the game as well. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to get my soap ball a certain way all year long and all of a sudden then it changes on you like what, what, what? yeah um just yeah. to go back real quick puerto rico yep. um was a territory around like 1917 i believe 
but actually became a commonwealth of the United States in 1952, which is considered similar to statehood. And I know there's been things about them becoming the 51st state, but it still hasn't happened. Yeah. No, and, and it should. Get, and, you know, the, as political as I'll get is like, it's obvious, you know, the Trump administration did not really seem to think much of Puerto Rico. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Not yeah, just leave so, it at that. That's but it. hey, you're honoring, Port, you know, look at your shirt today. And that, that, there we go. So I wanted to, uh, my, uh, my, nice my Puerto Rican ente, uh, Ed right. Brown, who is not in the chat. Que onda way. Que onda way, brother. Where <laughs> whoa, you at? Whoa, 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 whoa. I, think, I think that, I think that's more Mexican than it is Puerto Rican. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So let's, let's get to it. Um, of course, technical difficulties, uh, will not allow me to have, uh, my other camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do, I'm going to call an audible here. Oh, I'll no. do this. Excuse me. That that's football. This is, this is baseball. Oh, go, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa. Oh. What, what would be, the, ah, Dude. what would be the equivalence of calling an audible in baseball? Chris Cadillac caddy is in the that, chat. Right. That on. would be, you know what? You're going to, you're calling a pinch hitter or you're, or you're, you're going to the, you're going to the bullpen. Going to the bullpen. Yeah. Let's go to the bullpen. Right that's what I call it. All right, so let's do it. So instead of opening packs, I just have a whole. Um, <laughs> I have a. I have a whole. And this is all batter, so we, we can pick the ah. category that we want. All right. So uh, what would you, uh, Kevin? I'm going to go with you. Oh, I was going to hope you go Cowboy Jack, Rats. Um, all right. What's our so, what's our choices? Or we can we can go with Cowboy Jack. Because I, I I was gonna make one I was gonna pick one that my, I was thinking a little harder but I'm like yeah no I don't want to make it that hard. Or I, these are the uh, the the tobacco cards from last yes, week. Yes sir. Right? Okay. Yep. This is Alan, Ginter. Alan and Ginter. Yes. And we're going batters. Yes. So we have batters. So we we're gonna have like um, uh, categories like uh, let's see some let's see some categories here. So we have games played, runs, hits, doubles, triples, home runs, runs batted in, stolen bases, walks. Strikeouts, slugging percentage. Oh, uh, we also that. have, um, you know, I thought I thought of some other ones. We might want to do this later, but um, we could even do their weight, <laughs> 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 they, or or height. There's actually height on here as well. Nice, very good. So well, let's. Like you know, you know, I, I want to go doubles. Doubles. Right. Okay. So let's let real quick, real quick. These are the baseball card shark standings. Uh, I have Angelo as the uh, ghost runner in there. Uh, when he comes back, we'll definitely activate him. But Kevin, uh, going ahead with uh, six and eight, with a four twenty-eight uh, percentage there. Cowboy Jack, you, you got to get on the board here, man. Hey, hey man, you know what? You we guys all, rig this we... game against me, <laughs> but guess what? I show up every week you do. because I don't quit. You do. I don't quit. <laughs> Hey, so here are the, the board last week. We all did. We all did. Really yes, well. right. We all we all ran the Wait, board. So how did I not? How did I not get any points on the board? I ran the board last week. Yeah, but uh, ultimately uh, you lost in the tiebreaker. I won the tiebreaker. So here are oh. the baseball card shark rules. We're gonna draw. We're gonna draw eleven cards. You have three on the bench right here. We're gonna lay them out from bottom to uh, top. We start with the bottom, and then whatever statistic that we choose. Um, it's a high low game. So we'll, we'll walk you, we'll definitely walk you through it. So let's go to, there we go. All right. We're going doubles. Okay. So we're going doubles. Uh, yes, Jack, sir. do you want to go first or Kevin, do you want to go first? Oh no. Cowboy Jack's going first. <laughs> okay. Right. So yeah. going, well, I, I was going to say that they were with your, um, with your diamondbacks, oh, but now that right you're here. a brewer fan. Well, uh, no, this is... I, I actually got a letter from his lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Luis <laughs> Gonzalez. Yeah. No, I got a cease and desist from his attorney. Kevin Sorry Kermeyer from the Eliminated Rays. Alex Verdugo from the God, Advancing Red Sox. Solid, solid neck beard. This is one of uh, Kevin's favorite players from his childhood. This is Hannes Wagner. Ooh, Hannes <laughs> Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Uh, I believe, uh, yes, Andres Jimenez on the I was going to ask, were, I don't remember, they, were they even doing doubles at stats when Oz Wagner played? 
kidding. <laughs> That's yes. right. Just kidding. Don't, don't actually look. Yes, they were. They were. It was five bases back then, right? Yes. Uh, uh, Paul Goldschmidt, Goldie, uh, former Goldie. Diamondback as well. Yeah, former former Diamondback. Mike so, Piazza. I've never the heard Met. of that. No respect to the Dodgers there. Never yes. heard of Piazza. Piazza Met and uh, uh, Josh Naylor, right fielder for the uh, Cleveland Indians. All right. Um, Godzilla, Hideki Matsui. Yeah. On the bench. Oof. Jake Cronenworth is on the bench. And this is Jose Ramirez. A lot of Indians ah. in this one. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so we're going to start with doubles. Uh, let's go. There are 596 by wow. Luis Gonzalez. That's that's a lot of doubles. I, in that fact, like I, I, think, I think he might even lead the Diamondbacks in doubles all time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so 596. Does Kevin Kermeyer have more or less Cowboy Jack, then uh, 596. Come on. It's obvious, Sire, right? Wait, are you saying higher? I, no, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> no. I thought you were going to my sarcasm. Oh, Kevin, Kevin doing some gaslighting right here. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Paro, I have literally been legally threatened by Gonzalez's legal team. Yeah, I know you it's have. It's higher. Higher. No. no. This no. man, I don't know who this man is on the race. He's lower. Okay, I'm like, oh gosh, I thought you were going to go higher. I'm like, no, I was kidding. No, yes, no. Yes. <laughs> Bubble Fog definitely yeah, agrees lower. with you. Not even close. There you go. So Kevin Kermeyer doubles 116. So ah, yes, I don't know if you that many. Much lower. So 116 going to Alex Verdugo. Ooh, oh no! Oh, he's lying. <laughs> Oh, so I got to beat 116, huh? 116. Does Alex Gosh. Verdugo have Verdugo more or less? Terrible face. Dude, he's got terrible facial hair. <laughs> it's actually, weirdly, it's very baseball facial hair. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is, I, actually. Well, Bubble Pug saying, saying higher. Is she? Bubble saying higher. All right, man. I'm gonna go with Bubble Pug higher. Don't leave me yeah, wrong, girl. This is t I think this one's gonna be close, though. I think this one's gonna be very yeah. So you going higher, Jack? I'm going higher, man. I'm All going right. with Bubble Pug. Yeah, Ryan says higher, but yeah. he looks young on the card. He didn't so play a few years. Came for the Dodgers. 100, 116. Oh, I don't I'm know. It's gonna be close. I'm sorry. 113. 113. All right. 44. Bum, oh, bum, bum, ba -da. <laughs> yeah, he was thinking lower, but he might go to the bench. Yeah, Alec Verdugo is, uh, he hasn't been in the league very long. In fact, he started with the Dodgers. All right. Well, I guess I lose another one. <laughs> so we'll keep, we'll keep everybody on the you're, bench. You're, Jack, you're a winner in our hearts. Hey, thank you, baby. Of course. So, so should, I replace, should I replace should I replace all the cards, right Kevin? Should, Kevin, should I replace should all the cards? Was too much for me, though. No, no, keep the cards, man. Honus Wagner. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna replace the cards. Uh, we're gonna start out with uh, not Alan Trammell, but Taylor Trammell. All right. For the Mariners. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the great names in baseball, Ryan Mountcastle. All right. And who do I got? And who's my live card here? R Robin Yount. Oh, oh, Be geez. Get your beers ready. Yeah, I know that. Oh, wow. Okay. So, oh, so I'm sorry from the beginning. That's right. I was like, I'm just look at that Yount versus Oz Wagner, and I'm like, oh, that's gonna be a rough one. Yeah, it uh, is. It is. What I got with Trammell. So Even this uh, first Ta one's gonna be tough. Taylor okay. Trammell, double sixty-four. Sixty-four. So. Uh, then I'll, then I'll go lower because Mount Castle I, is pretty. Yeah, good. I I don't even think that he had. I mean, this year was his his breakout season, so I would definitely say. I think he played. He right. played. He played a little bit last year. Oh, whoa! Wait, to Michael. <laughs> no, no, I like it. We lost the screen. Did it? It, it went away, right? What the heck? Yeah, I just on? I just see the the B. Logo. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh oh. Oh, Jack. One sec. What's can up, you, brother? You can you can still hear I me, can correct? Hear you. I just yes, can't. Sir. Okay, yes, one sir. sec. Hold on. 
Taro. Hi, Jack. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm alive. You're I'm alive. alive. You're working a lot, right? This is your this is your busy season. 60 hours last week, 60 hours this week, 75 next week, 60 the week after that. Whoo! Wow. I'm wow. gonna have some fun. I'm seeing the Rolling Stones on Sunday. I try to squeeze some fun in there, you know. Try to Wait, live some life on. in there. Rolling Stones on Sunday? Yes, sir. Wow. I'm going to go see Willie Nelson this Friday. Cheers to you, sir. That's what I, I have never seen. So, Oh, really? This will, be my second, Stone, but... this will be my yep. second Willie Nelson. I'm taking my daughter on Friday. Oh, very man. good. Very We've good. We've got like box VIP seats. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And where is that at? Is it at the stadium? Uh, it's. Oh, it's an outdoor concert hall called Ak Chin here in Phoenix. Right on. We'll have a good time. I said lower, sir. What was it, 40-something, Michael? Yeah, I don't know why this thing is glitching out. What is going on here? Okay, here we go. Bring your okay, back. Let me, let, me, uh, let me get rid of this. There we go. All right, so we had double 64. Yeah, and I you're was going, going you're, lower. You're, you're going lo lower. Yes, lower. sir. Ryan Mountcastle has 137. What? Double? And as a rookie. That's Is that minor league stats? Yeah. It, it, thank you for clarifying that. Boy, I would I I it, it's funny, like they all they always do this to you. They they put their minor league stats on there. Yeah. But you know what? Right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, so uh, I'm glad you said that. So let, let's uh, let's switch this no, card I mean, out. I, is, is that okay? Is that okay? Like, do we agree on that? I don't know what. Because I, I I did not think he had that I, many. Yeah, this was his I breakout season. Again. I mean, I don't know. And that's his breakout I'm, I'm season. That everybody else. I thought this was gonna be. You know, I wasn't thinking minor league stats. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I I hate when they do that because um if 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 he's in the major leagues, put his put his major league stats even if it's zero. Goodness gracious, especially it's for our game. Me. Switch yeah. it. All right. Yeah. Switch it, Jack. Yes. I gotta be neutral here. Ian, Ian is a a a uh, a very credible YouTuber, so I'm going with his <laughs> and a car and a card guy, so I'm going with a switch it. All right. Okay. Yeah, and, and actually let's let yeah, let's yeah, uh, let's honor his major league stats. But by the way, but, uh, but yeah, year. some some great minor league stats. That's why he, something I'm like, that's impossible. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's go with Byron Buxton here. So, um, right. well, that'll be so, higher. So, yeah, uh, I actually saw his uh, very first uh, triple in the major leagues in Bush Stadium. So there you go. Right on. So doubles. You saw Twins Cardinals game in St. Louis. I did. I did. Right it was on. like it was quite a while ago. Game. Uh, Kimbo Slice was actually supposed to throw out the first pitch, and he didn't. Uh, right. uh, yeah, what? Wait, wait, wait. You can't just give away that detail. <laughs> it was the truth. He was see Kimbo Slice throw out the first pitch of that game. What happened? Is that when he died? Um, no, he just didn't he didn't make it, but he was supposed oh. to, he, he was supposed to do a show there and uh or not a show, but a but uh he's supposed to fight there and uh he just didn't show up. So I was like, oh. I was so excited. Um oh, wow. so 77, 77 with Byron Buxton. So you, you move That's along. It? 77. That, I'm pretty surprised about that myself. Way more than 77 doubles. Okay, so <laughs> Robin Yount. Higher or lower? Higher. Sure, higher. I want to go higher. 583. All right. So, so, yeah, so, so 583. Now a challenge. This is, this is a challenge. This is wow. A challenge. Hannes Wagner. All right. He's checking his phone. He's Googling it. Yeah, I agree. I'm obviously Googling it. Siri. Oh, I'm, 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 I can't look at the chat. Oh, Yoshi, I can't look at the chat. Um, 500 what? Um, 583, 583. Man, maybe I'll just go to my bench. You know what? Oh, wow. Going to the bench. Who, yeah, do, you, who what, do you want? What's on my bench? We have uh, Jose Ramirez, Jake Cronenworth, or Hideki Matsui. Well, Cronenworth's my best bet there because he's he's new in the league. We'll see what his minor league stats are, though. Jeez. Let's go, Cronenworth. Right, calm, calm down. <laughs> ah. Grumpy right. old man. So replacing Robin Yount, Jake Cronenworth with, uh, oh, exactly 100. 
That so actually surprises me again. as well. So there you go. That's his minor league total. But still, so Oswagger will be over a hundred. I'm just really curious at. Uh, yeah. So he has th- these are these are minor league stats too. So like yeah. we switch it switch it out or so we'll switch this yeah, out. I mean, you know what? You got to be consistent on it. Exactly. So uh, uh, this is uh, Aramis Ramirez going on the oh. bench. Okay. So who do you who do you want? All right. Uh, gosh. Let's let's go. God. Let's go. Godzilla. 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 Hideki Matsui. Your new two. Your new know, your new total is two hundred fifty nine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll- two. 249. 249. I was waiting for you to all of a sudden say this crazy number. I was like, of course I include his Japanese like stats in there. You know what I mean? God, this is the thing with this. I can't, I, I, I'm trying to just it's, it's make it, good. Don't worry about make it serendipity and it's they're throwing curveballs at me. Well, no, they, have they, fun they, here. If we've we're learned have anything fun. over the last two weeks, the Allen and Gittner cards are completely out of control. Yeah, it's completely random. I'm not even sure if these, these are even correct. Let's go higher for uh, Honest Wagner. Okay, so we're looking higher than uh, 249, 249. Yeah, I'm com- I'm pretty confident in that. I'm just I curious so if he has too. more than Robin Yao. 640, 640. Wow, he actually had more than Robin Yao. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be so sure on that one. Right on. So does uh, Andres Jimenez have more or less than 640? Way less, Kevin. Come on, buddy. That little, that, had- little si- <laughs> that little sign right there will tell you all you need to know. Yeah, it's obviously lower. I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if he has 10% of that total. 60. And that's, again, that's probably minor league. <laughs> yep. So, Paul Goldschmidt, higher or lower than 60. Yeah, easy. Goldie, baby. 305. All right. Oh, my man, Goldie. All right, Goldie. Ooh, this is interesting. Mike Piazza, Ooh. higher or lower than 305. Piazza's a jobber, Kevin. He's a jobber. He's a Hall of Famer jobber, sir. You know, he's a catcher, so I'm like, how often can he get to second base? I'm still going to say higher, though. Ooh. I still think it's higher. 305. I think it's going to be higher. Wow, 344. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I hate it when Kevin wins. Then going Josh Naylor. Come on. He has like, what? He has like a third. Come on. We know it's lower. I hate you, Kevin. 18. 18. <laughs> Runs the board again. Nicely done, Kevin. Thank you. That, that was that was a little tough, but I went to the bench, though. So, come on. You can beat me. You Michael. did. You did. You did go. All right. So, here are the next cards. Let me. Uh, All right. Here we card. go. Disco machine. Let's see what you got, baby. Uh, Reese Hoskins. It's so Ron good. Santo, an old wow, cub there right go. there. Alex Kirilov. Yeah, that guy. Dick Allen. This guy's awesome. I love Dick Allen right there. Big Dick Aubrey Allen. Aubrey Huff. <laughs> Is it Aubrey <laughs> Huff? Oh, Sam Huff. I wish it was, <laughs> it was Aubrey Huff. I, I'd cancel him. There you go. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, Cabrian Hayes, hot rookie. Uh, Chris Bryant, now a giant. So for AF Sports Cars there. Uh, Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer. And the going to the bench is Yuan Moncada. So there you go. All right. All right, Disco. I believe in you. <laughs> All right. I got to do it here. So Reese Hoskins, uh, doubles, 87. 87. Oh, wow, 87. I thought more than that. Wow. 87. Right. So Ron Santo, oh, old timer. Uh, I like the raccoon eyes right there. The raccoon eyes <laughs> are solid. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely say higher. Uh, doubles 365. Nice. One for every day of the year. Nice. Ron Santo. Not least, unfortunately, but he's close. Alex Kirilov. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was he looking for? Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. Alex Kirilov, uh, I mean, I'll definitely say lower. Definitely say lower. Um, double seventy-one. Yeah, that's fine. Dick league. Allen, <laughs> uh, feared hitter, feared hitter. Uh, Look at him; uh, he looks menacing. You know. Yeah. So now and, hold on. That mustache 
if I've learned anything from baseball movies, that mustache means you can hit a damn home run. That's right. And yeah. there's uh, we, we actually had it in other uh, beer baseball broadcasts. He's actually there's a very famous picture. He was on Sports Sports Illustrated. He's juggling three baseballs while smoking a cigarette in the dugout. It was a joint. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. wish, <laughs> I wish it was. He's a yeah, very right. outspoken uh, guy. And actually, uh, in the Phillies Hall of Fame, I will definitely say higher than Alex Kirilov. He should be in the, reg- in the National Baseball Hall he of should. Fame. He should. He should. Wow, 320. Hey, wow. Moves I, up here. I like number. it, when, I Sam like it Huff. when Kevin Lyon gets upset. What? Why Sam, am I ma- oh, sorry. Sam Huff, rookie, so definitely lower. 63, 63 again, for Sam total, Huff. All these totals. If you ever do these again, you're going to pick out these rookie cards. <laughs> well, I have another rookie right here. Uh-oh. So this is going to be tough. So do uh-huh. I go to my bench? I don't think I can if I want to win, correct? No. It, it, but then you'd have to go to the tiebreaker. No. This, Willie Mays Hayes, you got to go. You got to go through it. So let's see here. I mean, I'm all right if you want to switch. Switch this, if, Kevin. Switch, you shut working. your mouth. He cannot go to his bench. So he said sixty-three. No, no, I said switch it out because we did that for me earlier for a rookie. Because they're uh, my. I mean, staff. I mean, I'm sure. Oh, you rookie. know, you know what, you know what. Uh, so I, I said that these are it has minor league stats right here. These are actually minor league stats for Sam That's what Huff. I'm if you're going to be consistent, you need to switch that out. I, you're right. Okay. But I so, have a feeling that it's going to be the same thing for Brian Hayes. Yeah. Oh, you're you're probably right. So like that guy. Look at this guy. So switching out. Oh, Tani Shohei. So uh, the new total is 47. Oh. 47. No. So let me. Ouch. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going. I'm going to turn this over, but I'm going to hide it. So let's see if it's minor league stats. It is. For okay, Brian so Hayes, it's minor league stats. And you know what? Honestly, I, I think at some points we 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 got to be consistent on this. And I don't think we have been, so we should be from here on. Yeah, out. we want we got to win this, Michael. Come on. Okay, so the new right. one right here is Pudge on, oh, on the Marlins. Come on, there you I go. Think. What a work. Totally. <laughs> okay, so forty-seven. Oh, definitely. The next guy had to be a guy who played for twenty years in the major leagues. <laughs> so this is definitely <laughs> higher. We can't see Michael Stack. I'm gonna go 500, on the phone here. 572 so, for Ivan wow. Rodriguez. So, oh, wow. I mean, wow, that's a great five, That's actually a lot. 572. So this is actually tough, actually, I think. Okay. I don't know about that. Are you kidding me? Tough? No way. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Cause you cause... look at this guy's beard. It's patchy. He can't grow in a full <laughs> beard. This kid is. This kid's a jobber. Lower. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely lower. 172. Boom. Look at the lights, Bryant. 172. And who's the up against up top there from Detroit? Hall of Famer, Alan Trammell. Oh, D-Town, I... baby. D-Town. Going, going higher. For the win. For the win. 412. There you go. Boom. 412. So I there you go. Say higher, but I'm like, he's going to say higher. There you go. Good job, Michael. There you go. Ah, I, 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 I promise that I will get all of my technical issues going. This was, Hey man, don't worry about technical issues. We're here. We're all here. Nope. We're all having it, fun. Don't worry about sad, it. Let's rock and roll. I mean, honestly, you know what he's most sad about? He didn't get to see your face for all that. He wants to see your face. Right. No, I honestly, there it is. There it is. <laughs> now I'm a happy boy. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you win. I win. In your win. face, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> in your face loser man yeah. kevin's taking this a little <laughs> kevin far. no it's kevin. fine no he doesn't need to smile we all know a loser when we see one it's <laughs> <laughs> well done michael Cheers. well thank done you. cheers thank brother you. 
Ah, all right. So That's this fine. is where you can make it all up right here in baseball trivia. So we this definitely is, this is, me answering these questions, sir. Like how good I am. This is when I win my money back. Like this is <laughs> with my wallet. <laughs> all right, Jack. Triple or triple or nothing, right? Fifteen grand per question. All right, I'm ready. All right, so do let's this. do it. And we do encourage it. everybody in what the chat. We encourage everybody in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. We appreciate it very yeah. much. Um, okay. We encourage everybody in the chat. Uh, uh, we hope that you don't Google, but... Um, we hope but yeah. you don't bet either. If you're going to yes. bet, you bet with Jack or I directly. Exactly. Right. So here we go. First but of two. Honestly, though, like if you're going to Google it, text me, like side text me <laughs> so that I know. This player has the most career wins all time in the major league baseball playoffs oh, that, what ah, pitcher major league playoffs oh your so guesses like, are justin verlander my, my choice isn't there smoke is up there tom glavin andy pettit Oof. see and and john top guitar still out there my my instinct was telling me maddox and i'm like oh never mind there's the other two base pitchers in here so Verlander with the Tigers and Astros. Yes. Smoltz with the Braves, Cardinals, and uh oh, there you go. And uh Glavin with the Braves and Mets. Pettit with the Yankees and Astros. I was say, oh, see, what what about the, the Orioles? Come on, you know he made all those playoff games with the Orioles, right? Was he was he on the Orioles as well? I wasn't aware was, of that. I mean, when they when they sucked and didn't make the playoffs, so it doesn't count. Mm. I thought that's what we first came up with. Maybe I'm Oof. maybe I'm spacing out here. It doesn't this matter. Is gonna, you this is going to be hard. Yeah, this is a tough one. This is a good one though. I like this question. Yeah, this is good. Ian Ian uh, asking uh, phoning a friend. Uh, <laughs> he asked his wife, right? <laughs> there you go. Well, maybe just maybe Justin can ask his wife Kate to see if he can get, see if he's right on this. Maybe Kate can <laughs> yeah. the answer. Kate doesn't know anything about baseball. Stop it. <laughs> oh man, this is this is tough. This is tough. I'm gonna go with my gut. Yeah. Number four. Oh no. Andy Petit Pettit. <laughs> yeah, Ryan. Ryan's going with that definitely. He's. Don't let me down, Ryan. Don't let I, me I don't... down. I don't like this because we're all agreeing. Because I'm like, I think it's Andy Pettit. I don't. I don't like this. I don't oh, like. Well, this. I, I already picked it, Kevin. So I, pick Smoltz. How I can't agree with you. You can't. <laughs> you're no fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've ruined all the fun. You're, you're I've no taken fun all anymore. the fun out of the beer baseball blog. You're no fun. No, anymore. no, no. Please Nobody. pick pick number four, Andy Pettit. No, I'm gonna pick somebody else because you want me to. So let's see. Man, I feel like you should pick. I'm going to go Smoltz. with Tom Glavin. Ooh. Ooh. I think it's Smoltzy, but Smoltzy was doing bullpen stuff with some other team. So I'll That's just go right. with Glavin. That's right. He became a, uh, a closer. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll go with Glavin. Okay. So you're going with uh, Glavin. Uh, right. Jack going with Andy Pettit, along with a lot of people in the chat. Although I want to say Pettit, but I'll disagree. I Ian going with Verlander. Oh, cool. All right, I'm glad the, to one there. The answer is, brrr, if I can find my <laughs> second screen here, Andy Pettit there you go, yeah, has that. 19 yep. wins. He pitched 276 and uh, two-thirds of an inning. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. Easy. Super I crazy. I thought it had to be him, but I was like, oh, you know, we, I can't do that. I am the golden god. <laughs> I'm never letting you go first again. <laughs> so Smoltz, and, Smoltz had uh, 15. Night in our power. <laughs> Glavin and Verlander, 14. Kershaw in fifth place, actually. Oh. Uh, Roger Clemens as well um, in, at 12. Uh, Bill Foster, who I'm not sure who that is. That's 12. Uh, Some Maddox, uh, Greg Maddox and Kurt Schilling with 11. That's and it, yep. that's so crazy because there's no one, pre, you know, unless the, this Bill Foster guy is from a previous generation because there's yeah. nobody for even like the, like the, the nineties, you know, once the yeah. playoffs have expanded, obviously that changed all these records. You know what I mean? So right, Roger, then, Cl- so Kurt Schilling really pitched with 
hate and racism. <laughs> so, yeah. And it, Michael yeah. would know that. That's true. That's true. Michael faced him once. I don't, he didn't have that much hate when I, when I faced him. He was young, you know, yeah, he, was young. He, was, he didn't have he's so young and impressionable part yet. <laughs> um, so wait, so, hold on. You faced Kurt Schilling. Mm-hmm. Yes. I uh, was like in the, here, how, how did this happen? Surprise! You've never heard the story. Oh, you, you, but, you've never heard this. I don't, no, I guess sir. maybe our listeners have not listened to the story. So go ahead, Michael, entertain us for a moment. So in, uh, best, this would have been 1988. I went to uh, shadow mountain high school in Phoenix, Arizona. And Kurt Schilling was two years ahead of me. So he had already graduated. I'm sorry, three years. And, uh, so he had already graduated and, he got drafted by the Orioles and usually what would happen is whenever we would do, uh, we started baseball more in winter than spring. So it was like in January and we'd, we'd actually have major leaguers and, and minor leaguers come out and like, pl- uh, like practice with us, you know, sure. give us those. And he came out and he pitched live, uh, live. It was, a, it was a, it was a live game basically. So he could get reps in. And so, um, the guy before me, uh, Rick, what was his name? Rick something. He like, he was a little guy and he, he like hit it like a double off him. I'm just like, Oh shit, I can do this. Right. <laughs> um, I got up there and, and Kurt threw one, he threw this through a fastball, just right down the middle. It is, it was faster than I'd ever seen in my whole life. And I was like, Holy no. And, uh, I said, I said to myself, I don't care where the ball is pitched, I'm going to hit the next ball because I don't want to go O2. And I knew, I knew he was, he was there to throw strikes. He was just going to throw strikes. So I go, wherever it is, I'm just going to locate it. I'm going to hit it. He throws me a fastball again inside. I swing at it and I, I ground out weekly to second base, but I can say that I, I ground it out off of him and I didn't make a fool out of myself. And, and, um, if, if he could just keep his mouth shut on Twitter, uh, he could possibly be a, a, a hall of famer. And, uh, I could say that I, I hit a weak ground ball off a hall of famer, but yeah. no. No, no, <laughs> wow. 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 no, 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 his infamy makes up for it. You hit, <laughs> you hit a, in high school. You yeah. hit a grounder off a pro Kurt Schilling yeah. with all of this KKK <laughs> hatred behind him. No problem, sir. I tip my hat to you. Thank you, brother. Yes, <laughs> Thank that's you. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I did so, because I realized, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's never told that story on the show before. Yeah, I don't. How I don't. I never told that before. I, I even I might have I don't I don't know I'm not sure how it no, hasn't come you up. Haven't it just it's just never come up. It yeah, I would wear a T-shirt every yeah. fucking day with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, you know what? Michael dropped an S bomb. I think I dropped an S bomb. I would it, wear that on a T-shirt every day. I ground out weekly. Not weekly. No, day. you no. There's so no if, weekly, there's no anything. I'm you kidding, hit a kidding. you hit a Kurt Schilling fastball. <laughs> fastball, yeah. That's right. Done and done. Yeah. yeah. There's no details needed. It doesn't matter where he didn't, where 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 he where didn't embarrass he didn't embarrass me, but but uh, I was embarrassed because I didn't do better. But um, I'm embarrassed because I said the F word. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. You got excited. You got excited. So, so here here's a here's a little fun fact. If you go to beerbaseball.com and look in the archives, uh, I actually tell this whole story on my blog oh, and, you did? Okay. All right, and all right. Kurt Schilling right, actually blog. responded to it. Oh, Oh, did he? He actually responded to it, but here's the insult to injury. Oh no. There was another guy that, that he was a year older than my, than me. His name was Arnold Mondragon. <laughs> and he's actually weirdly, um, we're, we're not, we're not related. There were even, two even Mondragons. There was two Mondragons. In the I same think high school. In the same high school. So there, there was his also, name was, Arnold. His name was Arnold, and then his his sister Maria. And we I only found Arnold. Hang on, this is the cap of the story. Please let him go. Please. So so uh, so 
on my, on the blog, he responds to my my blog post. He's like, "Oh my god, I totally remember this," or whatever it was. He said, he says like, "Oh yeah, it was awesome," whatever. And he goes, uh, uh, "But my friend Kevin says he goes, he thinks you're Arnold Mondragon. He doesn't he doesn't know who you are." And I was like, <laughs> "I I think that's the truth." So I don't think he was responding. He think thinks I'm better. Arnold. And, it, I'm and sorry, not me. That makes you better. Is he off? Is he off? Is it's, he off it's, like the, 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 the disrespect. He doesn't know who I am. Total disrespect, <laughs> man. Um, also, um, yes, and, and uh, Matt Sinister says uh, the Z-Man story is is it is better, but it, it it's this is in the baseball realm. I, I will agree with you yeah. on that. Yes, dude, well, you hit you off. You hit off Captain Racist. Good for you. <laughs> I'm proud of you, brother. And I and I can I say, wish... um, so uh, Michael, can I can I do the big reveal now? Yeah. Hey, Jack. Guess who's joining us right now? Can you go? To, can you go to Kurt? <laughs> Kurt. Is, Kurt Killing. Yeah. yeah no, say no, hello. Let's go. <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to get a cameo from him, but it, it's actually restricted. He wasn't doing cameo. I was trying to do one for the uh, anniversary show. Oh, that would be funny. Yeah, oh, I, I really? want Jack the Joke Man every year. I try. I try. We're good. Oh, I try. All right, so let's go to do let's go to question two. Another question, by the way. Yeah, do we have, have another question. Do you have to be a member of the KKK to get him to <laughs> respond? Maybe so. Maybe that's that. why I couldn't get it. Uh, so here we go. <sighs> this I, I, player I, I, hit uh, home uh, runs. Michael, I might be able to help you out with that. <laughs> this player hit the most home runs all time in the Major League Baseball playoffs. I hate you say playoffs. I hate you. Say oh, playoffs. are we just going to guess? Or do we have World choices? Series, Mike. I wouldn't know back in the day, but not now. All right. So here's your guesses <sighs> Babe Ruth. All right. Duke Snyder. Oh. Kevin's friend. <laughs> Yogi Berra. That was someone I Or Mickey him. Mantle. Ouch. Anybody in the chat, please uh, put in your, when your answers or guesses. In the chat, I, now I'm surprised. I'm really surprised because our last question had all modern pitchers. And now for most of runs in the playoffs. And it's playoffs. these guys who all played on the Yankees and the Dodgers. Yes. Nicely well, done. Well, the Red Sox do for Baby Ruth, but. <laughs> yep. Disco, uh, can I good. ask you to read the question one more time? You got it. This player hit the most home runs all time in the Major League Baseball playoffs. You got Babe Ruth, Duke Snyder, Yogi Berra, Mickey Mantle. Now, one thing to, to consider here yes, sir. is, you know, there, even though the baseball playoffs have been expanded, mm -hmm. actually, when, when in baseball in the in the in the olden days. You only had to win the American League, so like you know that those two would face off, right, in in the World Series. So there was actually less games, um, you know. Like but still, for instance, that's like, where I'm impressed by this. Yes, the, the championship series, you know, didn't exist until what, uh, when it actually start. And I'm like, I don't know, the 60s, 70s. I'm trying to remember when it actually started. Yeah, the 70s, I believe. I'm trying to remember. So, off the top so of my head. one one thing, like for instance. The Cincinnati Reds in 1976 went seven and zero to win the championship. See, that's that's a good callback. If you saw the photo from this week's show, I was hoping you were going to ask that. Like, hey, what is the what is the relevancy of this photo? I'm like, ah, that's the 1976 World Series, sir. There you the go. Reds, that's so the this Yankees. is the 76 episode, 1976. Thank you, Kevin. Reds swept the Yankees. I don't know who they beat in the uh, NLCS. I'm assuming. I think they probably the Dodgers. I think you Probably. might be right. Yeah. All right, Kevin, you go first, baby. <sighs> like, I want to say it's Duke Snyder, but I don't think that's it. Although he actually hit four home runs in two World Series, if I remember right, growing up. Um, I still think it's the babe. Mm. Huh. I still think it's the babe. If I remember right. Jack? I might be wrong with this, but I think it's the babe. This is what I'm going to do. Yes, sir. I'm going to go Duke Snyder because I know 
He doesn't do it on every question, but every once in a while, he throws a red herring out there. <laughs> I know that Michael Mondrag throws a red Yankees herring. three Yankees and a Dodger here. So wait, hold on. Duke Snyder is what team? A Dodger. Yes. Sure. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do Duke Snyder for my boy Ryan O'Farnan. Let's go. Duke I can Snyder. literally say I, I did know Duke Snyder growing up as a kid. Believe it or not, I think we told this. Oh no, I'm sure you did. I. I. I yeah, that's all good. Wait, hold all right. on. What? Yes, sir. <laughs> what? How? It's just from going to card show because I used to go to all the card shows as a kid, and um, we could, we I I would just always go to the shows and. God, I would embarrass myself. I would go when I would go see him because I really liked his story. And in the fifties, if you watch baseball, what the big thing in baseball was for center field in New York, there'd be Willie Mays with the Giants, the Brooklyn Dodgers have Duke Snyder, and Mickey Mantle was the center field for the Yankees. So that was like the big thing. And I kind of just like the story of Duke. He is a local local guy. It's weird that one of my favorite players as a kid was a freaking Dodger, considering I was Angels fan. <laughs> and then, like, I met him at a, show, at a card show. He was really nice. And then, I just liked his story. And I went to a couple card shows. And I literally have a, I literally make get my parents. Oh god, it's embarrassing. I, I went to a, a like a t-shirt store. I'm like, hey Duke, it's me again. And like, I had something like that where I make uh -huh. a shirt and I would meet him. And I'm 13. God. Right. No, mom. that's super cute. I'm gonna go. Yeah, but I was 13. Duke. I should look. I should be more interested in things than that when I was 13. No, you're just baseball, but no, you know it's this fine, one is. dude. I'm and, gonna go with Hey Duke, it's me again. Number two, Cowboy Jack for the win. But long story short, I got the dome. Actually, went to his house once. I have a, a painting he gave me from <laughs> you his, went house. To his house. Really, <laughs> just a great guy. But I hope you're right for my sake. <laughs> sure. This yeah. this the story actually ends well actually. Oh, yes. Yeah. Anytime I have ever been invited to a pro athlete's house, it's never ended well. So I'm glad it as a 14 well year old time, kid. Kevin. Yeah, you know. Right. I exactly. I was 14. I went to his house. Yes. That's the reason I'm in therapy to this day. But. <laughs> So Kevin uh, is going with uh, Babe Ruth, number one. Uh, what, what Jack going with Duke Snyder. What do we got in the chat here? I saw both. We got uh, Mantle. Mickey Mantle, got? Yogi. Oh, there you go. And uh, I, I think Ryan did some Googling. He, he, I think he might have. No, he's a he's a big Dodgers fan, man. He's, <laughs> he's committing that shit. To well, Ruth. that's the only reason that he would know that Mickey Mantle – Ah, yes, 18 Aaron, home runs. I should, known. I should have known that one. That's all right. Babe Ruth, a lot 15. Of series. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Yogi Berra, 12. Duke Snyder, 11. Gehrig and Reggie Jackson, friend of the show, with 10. Yep. DiMaggio, I, I've never even heard of this guy. Bill Scowron. Uh, yeah, that's and, Moose Scowron, sir. Sorry? Moose is his nickname. You ever Moose? Bill, oh, that Moose. Oh, okay. That's, That's why I, I, I don't recognize it. Did you even say Babe Ruth? Yeah, Babe Ruth was number two, 15. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you say that part. I was like, at least he's number, number two. Yeah. So, uh, so DiMaggio, <laughs> Moose, Scourin. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was wrestling Ishii. And Frank Robinson, all with eight. Um, oh, the, the, the seven is amazing. Uh, uh, the people with seven is amazing. Are you ready for this? Yes, sir. Gil McDougald. Never heard of him. I, Hank I, Bauer. Maybe, heard maybe of no, him. I want to say it was a Met, but don't quote me on that. No. Goose Goslin. Oh, here we go. George Springer, which is very surprising. Wow. And ready for this, Kevin? You're going to love this name. Chase Utley was seven. Chase Utley has seven in 56 plate appearances. I was like, like it's funny because one of the first things I was thinking of for some reason, like David Ortiz, and you didn't even name him. No. Yeah. You would think that he had a, a I would lot have thought more. the modern players be in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got so many teams that make the playoffs every year nowadays. And it's like, yeah, nope, not even close. No Dave Justice, none of those guys in the Braves, and the, like, no Fred McGriff. That's interesting. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole bunch of players here that should be on there. Uh, definitely. So thank you so much. This is the show that we had planned for you this week. Uh, if you'd like to become a supporter and uh, of the things that we're doing here on the beer baseball blog, go to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. We have our Etsy store. Check it out. 
Search Beer Baseball. This is where we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. It doesn't take anything. It's all free. Please like and subscribe. Help us out. And uh, guys, uh, any last words before we sign off? Hey, if you guys use Amazon, go to beerbaseball.com. Click, find the affiliates page. Click on the Amazon link. It'll take you to Amazon. Whatever you buy there. Like, whatever I buy on Amazon, I buy through that link. And a little kickback goes back to the Beer Baseball blog. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Yeah, it's it's actually uh, coming up. Uh, Black Friday is coming up. All these uh, Christmas is coming up. So yeah. definitely check that out. Thank you so much. And, and hey, you know what? Again, if, if you're sad your baseball team didn't do well like my team or other people's, you need some humor, pick up your phone, call 516-922-WINE. That's the Jackie the Joke Man's hotline. Been around since 1979. Maybe you'll have some new jokes this week. I think it's the same one from last week. <laughs> I'm still going to call it after the show. Hopefully hear some good jokes. Jack, what do you got for us this week? Yeah, Jack, what do you got? Here's what I got for you. It's always something. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just trying to live my life. I'm out here trying to live my life, and then all of a sudden, there's this jobber, the Philly fanatic, coming at me. I didn't ask for this, but I will tell you one thing, Philly fanatic. I'm Pete Rose, your Bud Harrelson. I will (laughs) knock you out. Keep my name out your mouth, Philly fanatic. Cowboy Jack, he's the realest of the real. <laughs> Keep my name out your mouth. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. And that's one of only many men Pete Rose have knocked out. He knocked out Ray Fossey, knocked out some bookies over the years, I'm sure. <laughs> We're trying to get paid back. We're trying to get the money back. Like, no, we won. Hey, man. Pete Rose is amazing. All right? Of course he is. My favorite baseball, baseball, baseball player of all time next to Ty Cobb. By the way, sure. uh, we, uh, we were talking about doing a Las Vegas trip. Did you oh, know no. that we can go see Pete Rose? That's right. You shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it, I know it, this came on the show, but Michael Mondragon got an autograph ball from Pete Rose. That's where I got no, it. No, no, we no. are going to see Pete Rose. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. He used to have a, a restaurant and bar there. Yes, and uh, exactly. it's no longer there, but um, but yeah, but we can actually go. He does signings up there, like five days a week. Yes. So, <laughs> what? So Jack's like, yes. wait a minute. I don't want to get autograph. I want to take him out. Yes. <laughs> oh I no, we will. Pee, but you know, we will. We'll take him out. Yes. <laughs> and as Matt says, he got tombstone by Kane, yeah, uh, Hall, WWE Hall of Famer, but uh, yes, yeah, yeah, but not a baseball Hall of Famer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pete Rose. He's the greatest maybe, baseball player of all time. Can we can we make a plaque for him, like for a beer baseball hall of, for him to be? Oh in our yeah, beer baseball game. Let's make a plaque and bring it to him in Vegas. Say you're in our beer baseball blog hall of fame. Oh my god, that would be that's <laughs> goals. Let's we do need this. Cowboy Jack to present it though. Cowboy Jack yes. is our is our is our goodwill ambassador. Amazing, love it, love it, love it, love it. These are these are definitely things that I look forward to. The planning is all the the fun part, right? Of course. And yeah. then and we the execution better. And then the memories. Let's let's get the trophy and then I'll spring it on him. All right. <laughs> love fun. it. I will literally tackle Pete Rose just so oh, he no. knows how much I love him. <laughs> he's 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 actually not looking in that good of shape. He's probably days, like so. eight years old, so I don't know if hey, I want man, to tackle him. It's okay. It's okay if you break his hip. No, it's not, sir. <laughs> sure. Don't kill the man. Hey, athletes suffer, dude. All right? That's they what su- we do. <laughs> they suffer for their you art. You know, we're athletes. <laughs> yes. We yes, suffer, bro. Yes, sir. I'm going to tackle the sh- crap out of these <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yes. Yes. Nothing, nothing uh, says I love just- you more than a spear. Wrap it up, dude. Because I'm getting out of control. I think that's gonna be a moment where we go live. Is when uh, is when Cowboy Jack meets Pete Rose. That might be our first live from my life. Uh, It'll be Uh, our first viral video for sure. So, uh, salute! Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, We will see you next week, next Tuesday. 
for episode 77 is it possible like crazy seven yes so thank you so much we will see you next week good night everyone take care